As you see, the uh, Pangolin can be a very fun and interesting pal to use for preparing bosses, for dealing with alpha pals, and generally something you can get very early can be very, very good towards even late game. Not really a match for legendaries though, I'll be honest, so while it can be very fun, the time needed to put into to make one of these guys might not be worth it for you. But in this video, we're going to go a little bit over how I got to this pangolet, how you might be able to pull off the same, and just generally things to keep in mind when you're trying to kind of min-max a pal a little bit. So, as you can see, this pangolet has an attack of 2171. This is the stat that we were most interested in, and it's the stat that I put most effort into. And it has a base attack of 683 that gets amplified by 165% from passive skills and 20% from food. Now the passive skills that we've ended up with on this one are Sadist, which isn't the best. Lucky would do the job better. Lord of the Sea might be better if we were using purely water attacks. But I decided that the Sadist here was good enough. Lucky would be better, as I said. You can also go for Ice Emperor, uh, which do 20% to Ice attacks. But Lucky, Sadist, both of those do well. We of course do want to get Legend, which is both attack and defense plus 20%, as well as a 15% to movement speed. Ferocious, attack plus 20, and Musclehead, attack plus 30. All four of these passives add up to 85% extra attack, so we still have 80% that we're getting from a different source. That source is actually our party. In this case, we have four of these Kelseys, all at, uh, well, four stars, which gives them the highest level partner skill, while in team increases attack power of water pals. So this is going to take you quite a while. In our case, we basically... Again, 4 star 4 Kelsies, that's about 400 extra, well, captures or breeds, depending on how you want to do things. I was lazy, I didn't breed for a good one, but I kind of do regret that, because they can actually be fairly decent in their own right, because you can kind of see it here. Pal attack power is already fairly high, and we could actually improve these even more by, say, add another Kelsey to the team and uh, also have them bred in the same manner as we have bred this pangolet. But yeah, you can get a lot of extra attack from those passives, team of pangolets, that, uh, sorry, not the team pangolets, the team of kelpsies. But that does also limit uh, our movement a little bit since we don't really have a movement pal. Now, the last thing is food. And this one's actually really important because the way that the uh, calculation work here for attack is that it takes your base attack, then applies the passive skills, and then applies to food. So your food actually buffs your base attack times your passive skills. In this case, the passive skills, uh, 165%, 683, and this is about 1800. And then we get an extra 20% buff of that 1800. So that food skill is actually about 360 of our total attack here. So that is actually very, very important. It's basically a very, very large boost. Now, in terms of getting one of these pangolets, we are going to have to, of course, do a little breeding. But before we get into breeding, I want to go into another thing that can be very important to kind of get sorted before you really begin. So in PAL world, the way that IVs work, or basically the range of uh, stats, if you will, the range of uh, abilities, stats, HP, attack defense, basically, uh, there is a dynamic range. And some PALs will be better at HP, some will be better at attack, some will be better at defense. But in turn, the way that this works, we can actually go through it really quick here. So HP, or Vitality, has a range of 0 to 50% in terms of extra growth. Some pals do have, again, extra HP stats, up to 50% more than some of the others. And that can be very, very, well, very beneficial. Now, you won't see any huge variances between these pals, mainly because they're bred from the same parents. I probably should have gotten some more here for, the, for a better example. But generally here... You can have, in theory, a pangolet with the worst roll would have 50% HP less than a pangolet with the best roll. But the one that we are very interested in is attack. And attack doesn't go up to 50%, it goes up to 30%. But as you can see, yeah, the base attack of these three boys, 683, 600, and also 651. So there is quite a variance just within these three Pangolus, and that's one of the reasons why this one is kind of the stronger one. Keep in mind, this isn't really accurate right now because it still has a full buff. But 683 has a starting point, 600 as a starting point, and also 651. So we do want to try and breed a pangolet very early that has a good IV for attack because the 
well, they, the IBS do generally get inherited fairly often. So getting one that has as close to 30% attack as we can get to begin with would be really nice. Now for this one, I did use a calculator of uh, Blahable, I think it's called Blahable. I'll be linking it in the description. I'll be showing it on the screen right now. That basically tell us that our pal has 40% HP IV, which is great. That's very close to the maximum 50%. 20% attack IV, which is also good, 30% in the maximum, and about 25 to 26% on its defense IV. And of course, those are pretty massive stats. That means this guy actually is a fairly good one, although I didn't really care too much about it before I started breeding. We did end up with a decent one. But if you want to try and breed a good pangolin, I really just advise you to use the calculator, level up a few times, and see if you can get yourself a pangolin that actually has that good attack IV for better chances of, you know, one tapping even more of the bosses. Now, once you've kind of gotten your starter pangolin, we are going to start to want to get the perks that we or passive skills that we want. And the one that you're probably going to have the hardest time get is actually Legend. And of course, that's because we're going to need a Legendary Pal to begin with. But if you want to do this before that, you can make something like this guy, who's a Sadist, Lucky, Ferocious, Musclehead. And he'll still have fairly decent passive skill boosts at 80% versus 85. Won't get the defense boost, won't uh, get the, you know, movement speed boost. But that kid too can still be a very, very good pal early on. So you could breed for something like this, just to keep in mind, IVs are still good to have. Now, if you want to go for the maximum here, which is Legend, and again, you can argue that Lord of the Sea or Ice Emperor would be the better for skill. In our case, they would just go with Sadist. I would prefer Lucky, as I said. But honestly, this guy works too. Now, if we want to breed down Legend this guy, I did it in a bit of a roundabout manner, but I would rec really recommend just going to Power World Trainer Go for combinations that you know are useful to you and then breathe it down. In our case, we had our Jet Dragoon as the first legendary and we opted to breed the Jet Dragoon with a Dire Howl in order to get ourselves an Anubis. Anubis is something that I use for a lot of base work, so getting that extra legend passive skill can be nice. Let's be fair though, it's more for the combat purposes rather than anything else, but I did decide to just get it into Anubis and then work from there. From Anubis, we got a Ribbony, which allowed us to breed a Lavanda. And from Lavanda, we went with a Chickpea, because the goal that I was going for was kind of Fuddler. But you can follow this path in here to get it onto your Pangolet if you want to. In my case, I wanted it on the Fuddler because it had Lord of the Sea as well. But as I said here, you can kind of look into breeding the perks down. And we'll go quickly over how you can kind of do that with Power World Trainer's uh, breeding calculator. So here we are. We did start with Jet Dragoon, and basically what I did was go through this list here to see if I found a pal that I would very much like to get. And again, I'm looking at the end here to kind of figure out which uh, one that I'm going for. And as we went down here, we did find some easy ones. We could get on a Pen King, we could get on Anubis. But generally here, you want to kind of figure out which ones would be good for making the pal that you want. I did a bit of a roundabout way. Or we could go for, say, a Tombat very early, because I believe, if I'm not completely mistaken, that Tombats can be used to breed um, Pangolets. Sorry, that was wrong. If you can breed a Ballet, not a Pangolet. But as you get the idea, you get the idea here. We are kind of looking for pals that can breed the pal that we are looking for. In this case, Pangolet would be a Blaze Hal. Can't get him directly, so you're going to have to breed down to something else. So it's going to take you a little bit of work, most likely, like it did me, because I was looking for other things as well. But in our case here, yeah, you can just look at what can I breed with what to get a pangolet, see if anything matches the initial list, and then kind of work from there. So there isn't really a lot of options there, as you can see. There's nothing that really will allow you to directly breed a pangolet. You're going to have, probably have to do one or two generations, or, as I ended up doing, about three of them. But yeah, it's kind of up to you how you want to do things. And again, if you do breed them onto pals that have good combination with others, that's going to help you out in the long run. Now, for breeding itself, I do have a bit of a guide on it on the channel. You can jump onto there and see it. Breeding for kind of beginners if you're a little bit, uh, if you haven't done it before. But generally, breeding here is incredibly simple. You take pal one, you breed it with pal two, that results in pal three. And pal three will generally inherit the IVs, basically the range of uh, HP, attack, and defense boost, 
50%, 30%, 20%, etc. of the parents, and also inherit some of the passive skills. So breeding is actually incredibly straightforward, but it is going to require a bit of luck. And I just want to show you how long it took me to get a decent uh, decent pangolet here. So as you can see, Kelpsies, we needed 400 of those. Most of these have been caught. But for the pangolet, we ended up breeding over 400 of them before we got one that I liked. So it's going to take a while and you're going to have to put in a lot of effort to get the ones that you really, really like. But at the same time, once you get a pangolet that is as good as the, the ones that we have, we now have a good source of breeding material to breed other pals. And that makes your life a lot easier in the long run. So while the first one is going to be painful, breeding <laughs> legend onto a few others on the on the way here can be helpful again. But getting it onto Pangala should probably be your main focus. But yeah, that's kind of it. There isn't really much more to say here. That's kind of how we ended up getting this. And as you can see here, there isn't much, there isn't much difference between these to start off with. But uh, it's amazing to have a pangolin like this. It's quite fun. I think, I hope that I answered most of the questions that you have during this video. I did forget to mention this one though. You can enhance your pals. I really recommend you do this. You can kind of like I did, just forget about it. But it does give 30% to health, attack, defense. And this is an extra boost outside of everything else. So don't be afraid to, to enhance your pals whenever you have the opportunity. Maybe not every pal. At least once so you kind of know that you are going to be using for a long time. Yeah, that was it. Hope you enjoyed. You might end this with the pangolin beating uh, up some other bosses, but uh, if we don't, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you next time. And we are probably going to be messing around with some of the other pals that can kind of do similar things like Lift Monk and generally just uh, probably do some breeding for ranch pals. As you can see, I've been staying here for a long time. And um, as you might see here just from the chicky piece the cativas and the shiny lamb balls but yeah hope this video was funny enjoyable educational whichever thank you for watching and if you did enjoy it please like subscribe and i shall see you next time bye bye